Hi, and welcome to Loxahatchee Slough, located in the historic Northeast Everglades um, in Palm Beach County. The Loxahatchee Slough is a d diverse ecosystem, which is the north northeastern extent of the Everglades. It's made up of many different habitats like cypress swamps, open marsh or slough, um, pine flatwoods, and hydric hammocks, and as well as depressional marshes. And we're located in the slough portion right now. You can see behind me it's open spike rush with cypress domes and islands all around. It's definitely a beautiful place. Great habitat for alligators, wetland fishes, um, mammals like the white-tailed deer. The Loxahatchee Slough is the headwaters of the Loxahatchee River. Historically, it ran from Arthur R. Marshall, Loxahatchee National Wildlife Refuge, all the way up to where the Loxahatchee River begins in Jupiter, Florida. The slough has been broken up by urbanization and canals, but it's still an important source of water for the Loxahatchee River. The uh, C-18 canal, which was built, dug right down the middle of the slough in the 1950s, actually controls the water source for the Loxahatchee River as well as other different water sources but um it's a really slow flowing wetland here and it's an average right now in the dry season of maybe 12 inches of depth of depth and there's an abundant species of wading birds so far I've seen a great egret I've seen Lincolns are all over the place in here um, actually the Everglades snail kite has been spotted here plenty of times. Um, they actually do surveys to keep an eye out for them. Wood ducks, um, rosette spoonbills, and uh, many different wetland species that indicate good water quality like uh, both yellow and purple bladder wart. Um, spike rush and sawgrass is everywhere. It's mostly spike rush in the open areas and you see a lot of sawgrass around the cypress domes or cypress strands. We're deep in the Loxahatchee Slough right now. Found one of my favorite wetland plant species. It's called the lemon bacopa. It smells like lemon. I've heard they've been able, some people used to extract the scent out of it or the oils and make candles out of it, scented candles. But you wouldn't think something growing in this nasty swamp would smell so good. Just like a minty lemon, if there is such a thing. Here we can see the remains of a Melaleuca infestation. It's an invasive species that can grow in very dense thickets like this and completely take over a Cypress dome, they grow much faster than cypress trees or any native species. So they can easily outcompete any native species. They're all around us actually. Not to be confused with the cypress trees who are also missing their leaves right now. Just had to stand up in my kayak to capture the beauty of this place. Not a lot like this left. South Florida used to be full of this habitat. If you look closely behind me here, you can see some torpedo grass, another big invader of wetlands. Um, it's pretty well in check. I just see it in this one little area here, but it can literally take over and take the place of all this spike rush, bladderwort, all these different native species. You can see some sawgrass behind me. It's uh, another thing I got to keep an eye on in managing a habitat like this. We got an Everglades snail kite out here. Dangerous species, everybody. He's out there hunting. Oh, I don't know if you can see it. Dang it. Got that 
distinctive white stripe around the base of his tail. Looks like it might be a female. Come on, come closer. See it? That's a snail kite. That is a snail kite. Endangered species. And she's gone. After a long but interesting journey, we're finally arriving at the Hydric Hammock. It's a limestone ridge I'll tell you more about in just a second. But it's very beautiful. Well, after some twisted ankles and some vines I had to pull down, we finally gotten into the Hydric Hardwood Hammock in the Loxahatchee Slough. Very diverse habitat that gets pretty wet in the wet season. Um, a lot of different hardwood trees, laurel oaks, live oaks, red maple, um, cabbage palm is abundant in here, a lot of old cabbage palms, hundreds of years old, and a uh, bunch of different fern species. You can see swamp fern, cinnamon fern, here's some shoestring fern, but uh, dahoon holly, myrcene holly, wild coffee, there is a ton of species in this right in front of me right now, cocoa plum. It's extremely diverse and doesn't burn. It's in the middle of a wetland, so it's likely, might have been pine flatwoods at one point, but it's in the middle of the wetland, so it didn't burn for a while. All the hardwoods took over, got rid of the palmettos mostly. And uh, now that for diversity, it depends on storms and fallen trees creates an opening in the hammock more sunlight can reach the, the canopy floor and uh, even the dead trees benefit or can serve as good soil old world climbing ferns a big problem on these areas even the cypress domes too here we have some but they do a good job of managing it here there is some hog rooting for hog damage. They have to trap the hogs, keep them out of here. They can cause an extensive amount of damage. But uh, definitely a rare and beautiful habitat. Here's a good example of old world climbing fern. This can completely take over the canopy and pretty much kill the entire ridge. So this hydric hardwood hammock is located on a limestone ridge. It's just slightly higher than the surrounding wetlands. Um, and that causes these other species to grow. The um, more typical wetland species don't grow as well here because of the extended dry period. But um, right now I'm in the middle of some really bad hog damage below me. You see the bare soil, they rip up plants and Looking for grubs. Hope I don't run up on one. There's a lot of fallen trees around me. And like I said before, they're a big key for diversity. Here you can see all the ferns growing off of the root ball of a fallen tree. More, there's lots of mosses and lichens growing on them. And some of them, actually the cabbage palms, still stay alive sometimes when they fall. I could honestly go on all day about the different species that are in this habitat. There's a spider I've never seen before. Kind of hard to focus on or I'd show it to you. But man, so many different spiders and birds depend on this place. Or don't depend on it, but they flourish in it. And uh, I've heard a red belly woodpecker, kingfisher, heard another bird that I couldn't identify. And, uh, Uh, you can see in this open area, you just got a little more ground cover. The tree must have fallen and opened this up.
Kind of an interesting palm tree right here. Look at all the mosses and lichens growing on it. Completely on the ground. But it's still alive. <laughs> and I would love to spend all day in here talking about it, but <laughs> unfortunately we have to move on to other habitats. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it, but this is a hydric hardwood hammock, and it does get wet for a pretty good amount of the year, especially since we're in Florida, we got a pretty big dry or wet season. <clears throat> Just to give you an idea of the di diversity of hardwoods in here, we got a dahoon holly right behind us, the red berries. Got a wax myrtle right below us. Red maple right over here. Got your typical maple leaf. And you can see a, there's a downed palm, cabbage palm over there that likely created all these new, this new growth. There's all kinds of trees just, just sprouted. A couple years old. Maybe some of them maybe five, 10. Oh, we got a bay tree here. Almost forgot about to mention the bays. Um, got an oak tree. Looks like a laurel oak. Very important part of these ridges or islands in the middle of a wetland. Um, they serve as a dry refuge area, especially in the colder times of the year, which is also the drier times. But uh, deer could be venturing out into the wetland, eating swamp lilies, and forget about where he's at. Come along this tree island, might save his life, you know? This is a big one. There's probably a ton of deer and mammals living on it right now. But definitely have hogs that live here. That's pretty obvious. But uh, definitely uh, serves that purpose in the ecosystem. It's a sweet little find. It's like a box tortoise shell. Oh yeah, and I found a ton of native um, apple snail shells on my way here through the marsh, so that's a good thing about that marsh too. Yeah, it's not easy coming or going into the hydric hammock but this one's pretty densely surrounded by cypress trees, um, sawgrass, some hollies, a few different grasses. It's uh, starting to get a little wet and um, definitely not fun, but once you get in there, it uh, really opens up in the, under the canopy. Let's see if I can't find my kayak. Right here you have a structure that is managed by South Florida Water Management District and what it does is allows water to flow into the C-18 which is directly behind us from the Loxahatchee Slough and it helps supply the canal with water and it helps to control the levels in the Loxahatchee Slough as well as the supply to the, to the Loxahatchee River which a constant flow of fresh water is very important for saltwater intrusion and the water quality inside the river. You don't want it to be stagnant. And uh, this is a very big component to the health of the Loxahatchee River. Oh, had a fish jump. <laughs> 